Hello and welcome to this short little video on Bayes' Law. This video is broken up into three parts. The first part is the proof of the short form of Bayes' Law. The second part is the proof of the long form of Bayes' Law. And the third part is an example. And that example is it comes from the Bayes' Law handout in D2L, the multiple sclerosis example. So before you get started, you may want to download that and read over the multiple sclerosis example. So let's begin. The short form of Bayes' Law is the probability of A given B equal to the probability of B given A, notice that's the inverses, times the ratio of the probability of A to the probability of B. Bayes' Law is a way of flipping the probabilities. The long form is exactly the same as the short form except for the denominator. We just expand what the probability of B actually is. Probability of B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A plus the probability of B given A complement times the probability of A complement. So let's start with proving the short form. Remember the definition of conditional probability. Probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. And again, we're always assuming that the probability of B is not 0. If the probability of B were 0, then it really wouldn't make sense to talk about any of this conditional probability. The probability of me winning the lottery given that I sprout wings and fly, really doesn't matter in the overall scheme of life. Now notice that if we multiply both sides of that top equation by the probability of B, we get the bottom equation. So the probability of the intersection is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Flipping the order of A and B, we also get the probability of B intersect A is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A also from the definition of conditional probability. In this case, we just multiplied both sides by the probability of A. Now we do know that the intersections are commutative. In other words, that the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of B intersect A. Since the left-hand sides are equal, the right-hand sides also have to be equal, which gives us the formula at the bottom. And now Bayes' Law is just one short little division by probability of B, we've got it. The proof is based on the definition of conditional probability and algebra. And that's it. Now the proof of the long form would be exactly the same as the proof of the short form, except now we have to deal with that denominator probability of B. So let's look at that for right now. How can we take that probability of B and expand it into two terms? Well, when we do that, it's actually called the law of total probability. And here's how it works. So let's look at these two events, A and B. We can represent them in a Venn diagram. Event A is everything within the blue circle. Event B is everything within the green circle. Everything outside of the blue circle is event A complement. Notice that we can break B up into two parts. The part that it shares with A and the part that it doesn't share with A. Well, between the two of us, the part that it doesn't share with A it is exactly the same as saying it's the part that it shares with A complement. So B is equal to A intersect B plus A complement intersect B. In symbols, just throw a probability on that, and you've got the, the the basis for the law of total probability. All we have to do now is, on the right-hand side, those two terms, use the definition of conditional probability to break them up. And as we recall, probability B intersect A is the probability B given A times the probability of A. And the probability of B intersect A complement is just the probability of B, uh, B given A complement times the probability of A complement. No shocking there. And we just substitute that back into the previous equation, and we get the law of total probability. You may want to go back to here and think about why we were able to break the event B up into, the, into those two parts. The part that is a part of A, and the part that is a part of A complement. As soon as you understand that, you will understand the law of total probability because it's just algebra from that point forward. That is a conceptual pro linchpin. 
So now we've got the long form of Bayes' law. This is actually the one that's going to be more helpful for you in the future. And here's our example, part three. Now let's read the multiple sclerosis example in the handout. MS is an autoimmune inflammatory disease in which the myelin sheaths around the axons of the brain and spinal cord are damaged, leading to a loss of myelin and scarring. Multiple sclerosis is more common in women, and the onset, of t uh, the onset typically occurs in young adults. Diagnosis is difficult as the symptoms mimic many other neurological diseases. However, the McDonald test is the current standard. It uses magnetic re resonance imaging to detect brain anomalies. Unfortunately, MRI tests are very expensive. Furthermore, the McDonald test is only able to detect multiple sclerosis after scarring has taken place because the MRI test looks for that scarring. Also, the McDonald test has both low sensitivity and low specificity when dealing with certain ethnicities, specifically Asians. Research is underway to discover a test that is less expensive and is able to detect multiple sclerosis before brain damage has occurred, before that scarring has occurred. Now all that is true, what follows is not, so let's pretend that I found that test and we're going to call it the sparrow test because quite simply it's for the birds. Blood tests are usually inexpensive and easy to perform. In a clinical trial we found that the test had a false positive rate of 5% and a false negative rate of 1%. According to a paper by Rosati, the prevalence of multiple sclerosis in the United States is 49 per 100,000. So at random I select white person because that 49 per 100,000 is for whites and test her for multiple sclerosis using the Sparrow test. Given that she tests positive, what's the probability she has the disease? So those paragraphs we've just distilled into these four equations. We're given the probability of the disease is 49 per 100,000. We're given that the false positive rate is 5%, and the false positive rate is the probability of getting a positive, given that it's not that you're negative for the disease. And we are given that the false negative rate is 1%. False negative rate is the probability of you getting a negative given that you've got the disease. And we were asked, given that she tests positive, what's the probability she has the disease? Well, we don't see a probability of D given positive anywhere up here. So we know that we're going to have to use Bayes' law to flip the probability. So from this information that's given, we can actually get three more pieces of information that are going to be very important. Probability of disease is 49 out of 100,000. Probability of not diseased is 1 minus that. Probability of a false positive is 5%, which means that the probability of a negative given you don't have the disease, a true negative, is 95%. Probability of a false negative is 1%, which means the probability of a true positive is 99%. Now stop, rerun that, make sure you understand that this is a false positive rate and this is a true negative rate. This is false negative, true positive. Make sure you understand why these are the related ones. And notice that what you're given is the same in both. And so the leaders give us that this is going to be complementary. So, Using the long form of Bayes' law, probability of D given positive, all we have to do is plug and chug. From the previous page, we, know we can substitute in all of the values, go to our calculator, poke the buttons, and come up with, she has less than a 1% chance of actually having multiple sclerosis now. That's it. They were good tests. She tested positive but she still has a less than 1% chance of having multiple sclerosis. And the main reason for that is the probability of her having the disease in the first place is extremely low. If the probability of her having the disease in the first place were higher, then the probability of her having it now would be higher. So that's the end. We did three things in this video. 
We prove Bayes' law in the short form, we proved Bayes' law in the long form, and we worked through an example using the multiple sclerosis example from the handout. And that's it. Hopefully this was a little bit helpful. Take care of yourself.